Our strategy is, as we've outlined, to meet the basic medical needs, to provide transportation, but then when the um, transportation enables them to reach more of the community, there's automatically going to be a need for more medical resources. It's a cycle, a cycle that we do want to be in. We want them to have the problem of wanting more medical supplies. We want them to have the need of needing more hospital beds. We want them to need more um, hospital dressing gowns, because that means progress and that means more lives are being saved. Now, if I can take you back to the beginning of our presentation, we watched a short news clip detailing that um, South Sudan had just become a new nation. Literally just months ago, they became their own nation. And this is what's so exciting for you and for ourselves, is we have an opportunity to directly influence an uh, influential region of South Sudan and possibly set a precedent for how other medical clinics will be conducted, how um, gifts are going to be given to implement the community, and then possibly this could be implemented and become a precedent in other communities in Nyambuli, around Nyambuli and throughout South Sudan. The vision of this campaign is yes to bring the medical resources, yes to provide transportation, and yes to um, have a plan for expansion, but also a plan to maybe invade the neighboring countries of South Sudan that then be um, an example to those around them of what a community or a nation looks like when they are um, sufficiently cared for medically, which then causes the people there to be able to work more, to put more into their agricultural society, which in turn implements the economy, which in turn enables them to have more effective government and less rebellion. As you can see, um, that's an amazing opportunity, and we're just glad that we were able to have a part of it and we can share it with you here today. So there's one thing to have a vision, as I believe that we've detailed to you. But um, as the Bible says, you have to have a vision, make it plain upon tables, and run once you read it. And so in order to bring about this change that we foresee, we have to have a budget plan. So I'm going to take a few moments and describe that to you. Um, we've decided that the budget could be most effectively um, displayed and explained through two different phases. The first phase would identify the basic medical resource needs, um, and as well as provide the different means of transportation. We have outlined exactly how much it would cost, um, considering getting things into the nation as well through the National Aid Services, um, how much it would cost to, to get an ambulance, an all-terrain vehicle, the bikes, um, things such as hammers and nails, bunk beds, blankets, just to get the clinic off its feet again to be in a place where it can bring in more um, of the people in the community and start to serve them better. So that would be the first stage, enable them to reach more. Secondly, the second stage would um, be contingent upon the increase of patients, as we talked about earlier, uh, being able to provide all the supplies that they would need if they were coming in in a greater um, amount. And so um, here is just a list. I know it's kind of boring to look at, but it's kind of amazing how far our money can go here. Just for example, um, blood stuff or gauze, which is extremely vital from keeping disease from being spread and from a person's wounds to heal properly, um, it can be bought for three, $3.42 for a package and then times that by 100, which would approximately last them um, several months, maybe up to six months, that can be achieved for 342 of our American dollars. So that's just an example. Um, we have a magazine that outlines our plan even more so. And so if there's certain things that you're interested in as far as supplies, you can identify those and perhaps give directly towards a item that you feel strongly about. Um, another thing that Charity was able to share with us was their monthly expenses that they have as a clinic. They obviously have to have electricity, they have to have water, they um, are still paying for the land, they um, have other expenses, and so this kind of gives an idea how even with um, the staff, volunteers, um, their paychecks, how they're taken care of for, how they're compensated, as well as the other things that we detailed, what the budget looks like if you were to look at it as a whole. Um, a lot of people are motivated, and this might be you as well, if they can see directly what their money is going to go towards. So we set up a funding plan that would show you um, what you could do and give you some sort of ownership in this project. Perhaps the biggest item that you would be able to give towards would be um, funding the ambulance. If someone could write a check for that today, Charity's dream would come true today. If not, that's okay, but you could give towards it, you could contribute. Perhaps you're at a place where um, giving a blanket is all you could do. But think of a small child who might not have had a blanket before, 
now is going to have the opportunity to not catch pneumonia, to not maybe share a disease-ridden blanket with his sibling, and potentially have better health just from having the blanket. Um, we want to make clear that it's more than just money that you're giving um, to this project, to this campaign. These dollars added up, as we've just shown you, in a specific way, these will literally save lives. As the video showed quite explicitly, the way that they live there is almost uncomprehensible to an American today. We can't imagine being hungry. We can't imagine um, having diseases that we couldn't even help coming upon us. We can't imagine having to walk 600 and, or 6,520 steps, I think it was, just to get to a hospital. Imagine what that does to your feet, what that does if you're not able to eat sufficiently throughout that time. When, when you look at this project, and if the Lord's telling you to give, don't think of it in just in terms as a number you write in your checkbook, but think of it as children being able to have medical attention for the first time in their life. Think of it as an expecting mother being able to deliver her baby in a safe environment and stop the infant mortality statistics that are so high. Um, credibility, a lot of people are concerned about money that's um, supposed to be for missions as great as this but actually get taken to other places. We want to um, just reaffirm that there is a worldwide organization that we're working through, National Aid, International Aid Services. And so if there's any concerns about how this money will be allocated, they um, are extremely upfront with how they do business, who their contacts are, and would be more than happy to answer any of your questions, as well as put you in as direct a contact as possible with charity. And just as a closing note, um, there's always a kingdom perspective. Whenever you have an opportunity to give, whether it be financially, whether it be emotionally, whether it be physically, um, we have to understand that it's not just dollars, it's not just hours spent, but the end result is lives changed and lives saved, whether that be spiritually or just physically as well. And um, just to give a final perspective of what this kingdom perspective looks like, what these lives changed, would actually look like. Sarah's going to tell us a short story. This is a story, a sample story from Charity's blog, actually. In the village of Nambuli, there was once this 12-hour-old baby boy. His name was James Stang, and his mother was rushing into the clinic. She was very frightened. He was born prematurely, and as a result, his body weight was very tiny, and his breathing was irregular. And as a result, he could not be breastfed. As soon as Charity saw that, she immediately took action and put him on feeding tubes to keep him alive. And because there was no resources and because Charity was there, he lived. <laughs> he lived. And so what we're trying to get you to listen to is your heart. What is God speaking in your heart to do for the people of this nation? Yeah. Yeah.